Hey yo, this is O-Culture. I am Ryan Peverly. Hope you all had a very Merry Christmas or enjoyed whatever holidays you may be celebrating this time of year. I have a little post-holiday gift for you from my recent conversation with astrologer Carmen DeLuccio. In it, we're talking using holographic technology and astrology, the controversial, and may I say completely bullshit, 13th zodiac sign, and Carmen even reads to me from a book about my Scorpio Deccan, which I think we pronounce Decan because I got confused. My apologies, we're only human as far as you know. Either way, here's another deleted scene. Hope you enjoy it. And then there's, dude, there's, there's so many techniques, man. It's just, it's never ending. And I'm, we're always learning more. And uh, I think in the future, we're going to look at astrology charts holographically instead of, because right now we're looking at it in a two dimensional way on a, on a screen. Um, so in the, we'll have like these holograms and we'll, we'll be able to see it. It'll even be better. What? How the hell? What? How would that work? Like, how would that enhance the astrological reading, I guess? You'll just, you'll, you'll see more. Like, there's already, the thing is, is there's already techniques that we use now that make up for it already. Like, we can make up for that. that, well, that how? Could you tell me, like, a little bit about these techniques? There's a technique called uh, declinations, which is, it just shows it from a different perspective, right? It just shows the, it's kind of hard to explain, but... It's something that declinations is something that's more like back in the day. No one was looking at that. We've just we this is something that's more of a modern thing. So like what I'm trying to say is that when it's just going to be easy to look at. Right. It's just going to be you're going to have this hologram right in front of you instead of like see right now we have to look at one chart. Then we have to look at another chart to get the full to get a full three dimensional perspective. Okay. Right. So we have to look at two different charts. But in the future, we'll just look at one hologram. Instead okay. of look at two different sh- charts to get the third to get that three three D perspective. Are you so, talking about an actual holographic projection? Yeah, I think that's where it's going and down the wow. road. I think. Okay. Yeah, like I think we'll have a projection of like, like, like. See, when we look at a chart, when we look at a wheel, an astrology chart, it's based on it's geocentric. Right. Right. So it's it's based on it's an Earth based perspective, and so we'll have charts where it'll 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 just be like a hologram from a, a geocentric hologram of how everything is around earth yeah and so it'll it'll just be more see the thing is it's it's like kind of like back in the day before they had charts right before they before they would chart it out astrologers would look at the sky and they would figure out okay this you know this planet is going to be they'll just calculate where everything is right and so eventually they said okay let's put it on a chart and so that improved the way they viewed going from looking at the sky to a chart made a big improvement because you can see it all in one shot, right? So now when we, if down the road, if we have holographic charts, it's going to be easier to see everything together instead of having to go from different charts to see different perspectives. So, I heard yeah. of the declines just recently. You're talking about yeah. declinations. I, I just came across that term for the first time, uh, gosh, not too long ago, maybe a couple of months ago. I was unfamiliar with it, so I, don't, I still don't know much about it. I haven't, I haven't really researched it much. But that, yeah, that that is interesting. What I did see about it was that it's this sort of modern way to interpret something or other. I, yeah, I the thing is with declinations. For anybody who's sort of new to astrology, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about declinations yet because astrology is so overwhelming with stuff that I wouldn't, I would get to that later. Right. I'm still in the beginning stages of learning. I just I came across it in a book somewhere or something. Yeah, declinations are are pretty cool, but we're still we're we're discovering new ways of how to work with them. But um, well, what what are they exactly? A declination is like, it's basically like thirty six of them, right, or something. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, there's no thirty six. Oh no, you know what you're talking about? You're talking about decans, thirty six decans. They're de- oh, declinations. Shit. Decans okay. Yeah. 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 I it's wrong you know one. what. Yeah, so so the, with decans, do you want me to talk about decans or declinations? Talk about I think both decans, of them. I think yeah. decans would be better for, for your audience, to be honest, than talking about declinations. Okay. Declinations okay. is too technical to talk about. Okay, I guess, um, I, just, I guess I just got the two terms confused then. Yeah, yeah, decans are actually more um, something that would be better to talk about. Decans are basically, so back in the day, um, like even before they had a 12 sign zodiac in Egyptian astrology, they would divide it up into 36 signs instead of 12 signs signs that's what it is it's like 36 signs instead of 12 let's say for example um 
Um, if you're born in the first 10 days of Scorpio, you're in the first decan of Scorpio. If you're born in the second 10 days, you're in the second decan of Scorpio. And so, so when you, when you do three times 12 is 36. So it's like a third of the sign, right? And so there, at one time before they had the 12 sign zodiac that we currently use, the, there was like a 36 sign zodiac that, that it comes from Egypt, right? And so that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, that is, yeah, yeah, that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. My bad. So that's a more historical Egyptian way of doing astrology. Is that something in the West that's practiced much? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's it's used in the West, but to be honest with you, in modern astrology, it's been lost a little bit. It's more you see it more in the traditional Western astrology. Okay. Modern astrologers don't, and modern astrologers, a lot of them take, have a different take on decans as well. Right. They, they just look at it like, let's say, for example, you're born in the first decan of Scorpio. That's like you're like a Scorpio Scorpio. If you're born in the second decan of Scorpio, you're more of like a Piscean Scorpio. If you're born in the third, you'd be more of like a, a cancer kind of Scorpio. That's the modern way of looking at it. But traditionally, they actually like assign them. They were like a whole so- a different sign kind of thing. Yeah. Right. I think I was. I, I think I would be in the second decan of Scorpio then. You'd be in the second. If you want. Hold on a second. Um. I'm just, I'm just going to grab a book. I was going to pull it up the second decan of Scorpio for you. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so to be honest with you, with me personally, I look at the decans when I'm um, – just say I'm looking for a good time to launch something. I used, I emphasize the decans more for that because certain planets have are stronger in different decans. They're also called faces. Traditionally, they're called the faces. Oh, they're yeah, yeah. Faces. It's yeah, there's a, a book called 36 Faces. Yeah, that's the book I just grabbed. Okay, I was yeah. going to recommend and, that and book. The guy yeah. that wrote it, Austin Kopic, I heard him on the Astrology Podcast. Have you heard this podcast? Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. Heard him. He's, he's on there all the time. He's, he's, a, he's yeah. a great astrologer, and, and uh, they, they mention his book every now and then. But I haven't picked it up. Yeah, I just came across it. I was listening to him uh, talking about like the election stuff on this podcast and the way he was talking about it was was pretty interesting yeah yeah it's been lost and so his book is actually a a good it's sort of a landmark book because there's no book like this out there right it's yeah there's nothing because he actually went into the history and and looked and he also kind of created his own version um of it as well right And, and the the 36 faces are not signs that are sort of like set in stone like the 12 signs are it's kind of like a little bit loose the way people interpret them but so he kind of like looked at traditional interpretations of them and he kind of did it in his own way his interpretation of it but um if you want i can look at the second scorpio if you want to talk about it on the show but do it um, man i don't mind getting a little personal here let's see okay let me pull it up Scorpio 2, an, an apparatus for a mutual distillation. Um, I'll just pull up the sun. That sounds, that sounds very alchemical. Yeah, I would imagine that the middle of Scorpio is probably the most alchemical for sure. Um, okay, where is it? Sun and Scorpio. Oh, here we go. Um, so this is, I'm reading this from Austin's book. It says, in the descending order method of determining rulership, the sun is the lord of this face and provides sufficient spirit to heat the emotional material exchanges that takes place here. Thus, without affliction, the natives achieve the unions they desire, though they must walk the trials of intimacy and tests of trust which line this face's tunnel. Though often focused on a romantic partner, their ability to navigate the subtleties of exchange are beneficial in many areas of life, especially business. The sun is considered the ruler of this face and thus serves to unlock the power of this decan. Soul here has the power to bring about mutually satisfying exchanges of all kinds, as well to invigorate existing relationships. The Samhain sun is a doorway which opens onto a vision of the ultimate tantra, that of death and life. Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what's interesting is because that's the middle of, see, Scorpio is a fixed sign, right? So Scorpio is... It's the middle of the season. It's fixed in the middle of the season. And then if you're in the middle decan of the middle sign, you're like, that's that's Sam, Sam Haynes, the middle of the season. So that's like even more. I would imagine that, yeah, that probably is the most alchemical because it's, you know, in some ways, Scorpio is kind of the, the strongest there. Right? Any fixed sign is going to be strongest in the yeah. middle of it. So You mentioned a few minutes ago this very controversial 13th sign. 
Yeah. What is this about? Where did it come from? Why do people? Why are we trying to change the zodiac here? I mean, what's what's the point? Yeah. So the, every now and then this comes up. I remember back in 2011, this was a big news story as well. They said, oh, some astronomer come out and said, oh, we just there's another constellation. The astrologers had it wrong the whole time. Your zodiac has changed. <laughs> so it's it's kind of funny because astronomers are supposed to be against they're usually against astrology and now they're saying oh no this is the new zodiac and now they're declaring the zodiac all of a sudden what so the thing is is that what when we look at the 12 signs of the zodiac they're loosely based on constellations but they're not like what i was saying before the the tropical zodiac is based on the earth sun relationship so back if we go back two thousand years ago we have so you're Scorpio, you're tropical sign Scorpio, but then there's also constellation Scorpio. Constellation Scorpio has shift. All the constellations have shifted over. There's the procession. They're not they're not totally aligned with the tropical signs, but they never were. They never were because the constellations are actually all different sizes, and so they they were basically like 2,000 years ago. They knew this. Um, Hipparchus, sorry, uh, Ptolemy popularized. He said, you know what, guys. We got to we got to base the zodiac on the um, the tro- a tropical coordinate system based on the Earth Sun relationship, and we we have to divide everything equally. We can't based on constellations because it's not equal. And we, so basically, we've known that for the last two thousand years. Like so, the thing is, is that there's there's like eighty eight known constellations in total, right? Not twelve, not thirteen, eighty eight. However, thirteen of those are on the ecliptic. Right. The ecliptic is the the pathway of the earth and the sun and the, the equator. And and so basically um, there's 12, there's 13 signs on it and so including Ophicus. So that's why they're saying, OK, Ophicus has to be the, it's a new sign. It's the 13th sign. But so that's why they say Ophicus is, is in there, because Ophicus is a, along along the ecliptic. But it's still like just the edge of Ophicus is on the ecliptic. And the reason why it was never used is because astrology is supposed to be everything symmetrical. Everything's equal. We have 12 signs, three signs per season. We got um, four elements, you know, three qualities. We got, you know, three signs per element and all that. So everything, if, if we have a 13th sign, it's going to throw everything off. It's going to throw off the whole symmetry. It's, it's you know, what element is, is Ophicus going to be? What quality is it going to be? What Then the signs aren't going to be equally divided anymore. We're not, you know what I mean? So it's, throw, like, it's, it's supposed to be symmetrical, right? So you, right, you can look at constellation Ophicus. If you have a planet aligned with a star in Ophicus, then that Ophicus is going to influence it, but not, it's not a sign. Right. It's just it's just it's just that energy of that constellation, that star will will influence that planet. But that planet is still going to be in whatever sign it's in. When I first heard about it, I took a very conspiratorial view of it. It just seemed like mainstream science was just trying to fuck up astrology. Yeah, exactly. Like throw people off, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was going to say that. Um yeah, hundred percent. I think I think they're every now and then that's what they do. They 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 confuse people and then just to say that you know, it, they'll say, "Oh, the zodiac's changed," but then it's almost like they're they're just like playing a trick on us to get people think like get something gets people like confused about astrology and just be like, "Ah, oh, screw it, astrology's bullshit" or whatever. Or, right. I said this last time we talked. You know, I found astrological significance in my life, and it's been pretty spot on in terms of you know my my personality traits and and how I've interacted with with other people of of different signs and I, I do I do find some credence and some significance like I said there well there you have it my thanks to Carmen DeLuccio for chatting it up with me and my thanks to you for listening you know 2017 is almost here and before the calendar flips I just wanted to express my appreciation and gratitude and love to those of you who have given me and this podcast a chance to be part of your life here in the latter half of 2016. There's a lot of great podcasts out there, particularly around this subject matter. So for you to spend your time with me and our guests from week to week, I can't even put into words how much that actually means to me. And I'll tell you, it's been quite a lot of fun for me to put this show together, and it is by no means a finished product. Hell, we're just getting started, man. I'm still tinkering with sound and sound quality. In fact, I just recently changed my recording rate from 432 hertz to 528 hertz, which is supposedly the frequency of love, if you find credence in such things. And to be honest, I certainly do. I'm also putting together a new type of episode for this podcast. You may have heard me mention a a new feature that I've been working on in some recent episodes. 
and I wanted to give you just a little bit more info on that. What I'm doing is I'm recording an audio blog over binaural beats. It's just me talking about something interesting, something thought-provoking over binaural beats. And the first one is about 75% done. It's taken me about two months to get to this point on the first one to put it together. And when you hear it, you'll understand why because it's very research intensive. But I promise you, the content is awesome. And it's definitely experimental. And that's the best part of starting projects like this. Just being able to experiment, to build your audience from scratch and kind of take them on this journey with you. And I think experimenting with your art is necessary. And I absolutely see this as an art. So it's important to me as an artist to try new things from time to time. It's just like life. You step outside your comfort zone and that's where you always find yourself. It's where you always find what you're looking for. And like I said, there's a lot of great podcasts out there. And if you're subscribing to this one, if you're spending your time, your valuable, valuable time, which I tell people often, you know, time, this is the only currency that matters here. So if you're going to spend your time with me, if you're going to choose to hang out with me, I want it to be because what I'm giving you is fresh and unique and just a little bit different than what you get elsewhere I mean, where else are you going to get a podcast that gives you some weird news and thought-provoking conversations recorded at a frequency that resonates with love and also makes you want to dance your ass off? And speaking of thought-provoking conversations, as far as upcoming guests are concerned, I am super excited about the next handful. They are definitely thought-provoking. They're they're thought-provoking deconstructionists of Everything from religion and spirituality to health and medicine to energy and the very nature of our reality, both biologically and universally, that is not an exaggeration. So that's what's coming your way from me to kick off 2017. Again, this is Oculture, Esoterica, and EDM now at 528 hertz. I am Ryan Peverly reminding you to love yourself, think for yourself, and question authority. Have a safe and happy new year, and I will see you on the other side.